The Mocha has been on sale since 2012 and morphed into the Mocha X in 2016, which was Vauxhall's attempt to keep its smallest SUV competitive against some pretty talented new rivals. So the little Vauxhall got chunkier styling on the outside and an improved infotainment system on the inside. But is that enough for it to outshine the likes of the Serta Teca, our favourite family-sized SUV for under 20,000? Value for money is a strong point for the Mocha and if you're thinking of buying one, head to whatcar.com and go to our new car deals section where we can help save you thousands on your next new car. There's plenty of options to choose from with the Mocha. You can get front wheel drive, all wheel drive, petrol, diesel, manual, automatic. This one here that we're testing today is our preferred choice. It has a 1.4 turbocharged petrol engine fitted with a manual gearbox. Let's see what it's like to drive. The 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol delivers a pretty big punch. It makes the Mocha feel comparably swifter than a Nissan Qashqai or Seat Ataka. And the power is delivered sufficiently across a wide rev range. Unlike the 1.6, which seems to have a sudden surge at 2000 RPM, which doesn't last long. The manual gearbox generally has a positive action, although watch out from second to third because it can feel a bit notchy. The brakes and clutch can feel snatchy, which means that driving around town isn't quite as smooth and easy as you'll find a Seat Ateca is to drive. And the Mocha isn't as good to drive as rivals elsewhere either. The steering is numb, it rolls too much in the corners, and it just doesn't grip the road very well. There's more bad news when it comes to ride quality, which isn't up there with the best of the competition. The Mocha feels unsettled over low speed undulations, while large potholes send a jolt through the interior. The 1.4 petrol engine is quieter than both the 1.6 diesel and petrol, so if you are going to buy a Mocha, that's the one to go for. Drivers of all shapes and sizes should be able to find a comfortable driving position because there's plenty of adjustment in the seat and steering wheel for reach and rake. You do have to go for the more expensive trim levels of Elite or Ultimate if you would like adjustable lumbar support on the driver's seat. In terms of visibility, it is excellent because you sit quite high up and the front pillars are thin. Out the back though, the window is a little on the small side and the rear pillars are quite thick. However, you do get parking sensors as standard and if you would like to spec a reversing camera, you can do so. There's a touchscreen infotainment system, which is easy to navigate and pretty responsive. The icons are quite small, but it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Up front, the Mocha easily accommodates two adults and there's plenty of storage compartments. There's one here, which I can put the key because I'm not driving at the moment. And banana can go either in the door bin in the glove box, which is a decent size. Large bottle fits here in the cup holders or in the door bin. And there's another storage compartment here for my healthy snacks. Sunglasses, yeah, they'll fit in there as well. And phone in the glove box. In the rear, it's big enough to sit two adults or three children, but if you try and put three adults side by side, it is a bit of a squeeze. You'll find that there's more space in a Serta Teca or Nissan Qashqai. The rear seats fold flat, but you have to lift the seat base up before folding them, and if you have the front seats a long way back, they won't lie flat. So it's not the most practical car for carrying larger items. Although the boot will swallow a couple of large suitcases or a pushchair, it's shallower than rivals such as the Renault Capture. However, if you don't spec a full-size spare wheel, you can take advantage of the storage underneath the boot floor. This one, however, does have a full-size spare wheel, so the boot is quite small. As we've already mentioned, the 1.4 litre turbocharged petrol is our pick of the Mocha's engine lineup, and we think the cheapest design nav has enough kit to keep most people happy. 
It comes with climate control, automatic lights and wipers and an 8 inch infotainment system with sat nav and a DAB radio. Not everything we recommend is included though. It is not possible to add automatic emergency braking to any mocha and we think this is a vital piece of safety kit. It's also worth considering casting your net further if driving enjoyment is a stronger priority. The larger Seata Tekka and smaller Arona are both far more rewarding from behind the steering wheel. For plenty more on the Vauxhall Mocha, including our full online review, head to whatcar.com. Remember, hit subscribe and never miss another video. And if you're thinking of buying one, we can help save you money on your next new car. Head to whatcar.com and go to our new car deal section.